Welcome to the CBS Sports Classic. And we begin in downtown Cleveland with a matchup of Blue Bloods. It is Carolina versus Kentucky with the Buckeyes versus the Bruins to follow. With Bill Raftree, I'm Carter Blackburn. And what a joy it is to have Kentucky, Carolina, to tip it off here in Cleveland. Buckle up! We're gonna get a little woo-woo. Both teams like to push the basketball. I think the key is, can the bigs get back and counter? So Carolina, Kentucky with tempo. All right, Bill, everyone has weighed in <laughs> on how Kentucky can get better, improve from one and four. Well, what do you want to see out of the Cats? Well, first of all, we're going to see a little bit by Carolina. Uh, they've got to knock down shots, but they've got to get Saar involved early and often, I think. Terrence Clark gets a touch back to Clark. Nine to shoot. Good look from Saar and a hammer down from Isaiah Jackson. Yeah, Jackson's good at that. Good defender, too, with his ability to shot block. A lot of high-low action with Brooks and Baycott. Caroline does a great job going side to side. Nice little stagger screen for a good look. R.J. Davis in and over the back. That's a foul called on Garrison Brooks, and that is a costly first foul on Brooks. Oh, absolutely. Of course, uh, I think the difficulty for both clubs, how the guards respond, whether they can knock down some shots, value the basketball. A slice cut, pin down. Austin gets the foul rather than Brooks. That is important. <laughs> foul on Jackson. So two early fouls against the Cats. Two familiar faces on the sideline, obviously. Oh, Dave Smith, Hall of Famers, Roy Williams and John Calipari. Well, if you're not shooting the ball well, you've got to drive it. And obviously, use your big guys to make good decisions. To begin the CBS Sports Classic in Cleveland, a matchup of Blue Bloods. It is Carolina versus Kentucky. Carter Blackburn with the LaSalle basketball <laughs> star, Bill Raftery. Oh, I love how you extend the truth. Uh, the ability to get up and down the floor. Ooh, very important. Great denial on the wing here as well. Not a good game. A five on four now. Two nothing start for the Cats, but two early fouls as well. Mintz in the corner. Three won't go. Second chance. Boston, who picked up one of those fouls, gets his first bucket. The freshman, Brandon Boston Jr., the Cats need a good game out of it. They sure do, and Mintz, one of those guys, I think he's the best shooter on this team. But soft enough to be tippable. Little empty side ball screen here by Carolina, goes side to side, the dive to the box. Pretty, huh? Davis with a nice feed inside, first bucket for Carolina. So, Bill, what do you see defensively from the heels? Carolina with a little bit of and unfortunately, a little nickel dimer by Davis. Now we take a look at our starting lineups. Two freshmen at the backcourt for the heels, Davis and Love. Three freshman starters for the Cats. And, of course, our coaching matchup, two Naismith Hall of Famers, Roy Williams and John Calipari. Trying to find their stride, Kentucky, right now. Problems turning it over. Not shooting the ball well from the perimeter. That's why Saar becomes essential in that offensive scheme for John. Well, Coach Cal said yesterday was the most mature practice of the year here yesterday. A lot more chatter. Feels like the individuals are coming together more as a team. Well, he said that counters the immature people announcing the game. <laughs> well, one very mature man had to travel. By the way, Davis got his first personal for Carolina. And for Roy Williams, who had a bow to Mr. Raftery before tip. A very impressive. It has nothing to do with success coaching, just the uh, acknowledgement of age. All right, so both of these teams, Bill, have had their issues in the early going. I mean, Carolina's 4-2, top 25. We know Kentucky's struggling at 1-4, and four, but biggest things you want to see out of Carolina and Kentucky. I, I think the inside game for both clubs is essential. And not making mistakes with the ball. Nice kick out. Black 
missed three, but a second chance. Baycott, strong to the rim, fouls on the floor as whistled by Eric Curry. That is already the third team foul on Kentucky. Well, I love Baycott's motor, though. They called it on the floor, but ready to go to that lefty hook. But you notice uh, the missed deep shot. Well, that's a big second one on Isaiah Jackson. He had the first bucket for Kentucky. Terrific freshman at 6'10", but that is too early fouls. That could loom big. Now look at this nice out of bounds play. Set up screen. Black with the bump. Speed at the rim. Garrison Brooks hammers it home. 4 all. Terrence Clark has to play an even bigger role now for the Cats. Clark. Back to Mintz. The grad transfer. Creighton. Boston covered up. Heels defending. Mintz has a three. Right over the top. That's the guy. He is a confident stroker, terrific career at Creighton. Brings maturity to the floor as well. Little horn set, pick your poison. Little high-low action, typical Carolina. Do a nice job cross-screening the bigs. Loeb has it nine to shoot. Loeb turns the corner off the screen from Baycott. Davis five to shoot. Off the bounce. Davis in the lane. R.J. Davis through contact. Zarr keeps it alive. And now Mintz runs the catch. Nice look. And Boston finishes it off. It's Mintz to Boston on the block. A great field by Mintz. Heads up play. Filling the lane on the wing. Box to box. Always, this is the game I think they have to do. Drive the ball to get decent mid-range jumpers into you. Get that confidence in black. Over the back, looks like Brooks picks up the first personal foul. Cleveland rocks, and the Cats bombing from long range. Ooh, a little nylon. Mid that, baby. How about the little look away? A little maneuver at the tin. Big time, Boston. AA titles combined, Carolina and Kentucky. And now as we take a look at our AT&T 5G fast analysis with tempo. Speed, adrenaline, the ability to push the floor. Both clubs like to do it. Carolina consistently with that high-low set. He must get back and cover if you're going to be effective. And so, I mean, for Roy Williams, it's pretty simple. I mean, the, the freshman guards have to play better. And, and then for Kentucky, pretty good start here for the Cats building off that second half against Notre Dame. Exactly. The, the one thing, they've made some shots, so they got the ball floor balanced. If they take bad shots or turn it over, the woo-woo ability, and out of a timeout, a little wrinkle, a run and jump. And you gotta Askew, be ready. Askew brings it up now for Kentucky solo. Point guard position continues to be revolving, and Askew makes his presence felt. The freshman from Sacramento, it's a 7-0 run for Kentucky. Uh, if you're not shooting the ball away, you're getting your mind into the game. A little dribble drive. A little cross screen, just a great job they do. Saw a little late on the cover. Woo! Brooks and one through Woo! contact. The big man from Alabama finishes. And that's all set up earlier with a nice cross screen, begging for the basketball, and just that little drop step, solid. And Saar, not doing his homework early, presenting some defense. Scratch those eyes last year as he's been wearing the goggles. Rip Hamilton-like. First was on Saar, and now will fight for the rebound. Is one by Boston. Mintz, quick Woo! trigger. Well, that Cats are coming out. Fire it, Ben. That reminds me of him at Creighton, by the way. Can't shoot, knock it down. Played in post entry, looked like it was kicked. Boston active, however, defensively. Uh, Cal was saying the practice, the best he's had. Of course, when you're not playing well, you got to work a little bit harder. Nice preparation give, and Mitz gets those puppies organized. Back to fundamentals as well. Shooting practice. I mean, from the Clarion days, John Calipari, five-star, right? Absolutely. Of course, Howard Garfinkel ran the camp. Some great names. UB Brown, Rick Pitino, amongst many. Chuck Daly. God Pete bless him. Pete, well, you had to get Pete's name then, of course. <laughs> He was a camp counselor, if I'm not mistaken. Yes, he was. There's a great picture of Michael Jordan and Pete Gillen together at five star. He donated his money at Mass, I'm sure. He took it down with a dribble and push off, unfortunately. Offensive foul turnover for Carolina. That's on Sharp's first. Take, 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 take it down. 
Well, we can hear all the calls now. Let's see if this is part of that high ball screen and pin downs. Askey bringing it up again. Askey attacks. And that's a travel. So Kentucky gives it right back. Sauer turns it over. So Kentucky, Carolina to start. And in game two, Bruins versus Buckeyes. Four of the biggest names in college basketball here today. You know, unfortunate as every year, it's been an exciting group of teams. Obviously, a little rearrangement for this one, but great coordination from the coaches. I'll tell you what, the December 06 matchup that you had in Vegas between these two was all time. So that month, so we had 16. Yeah. That was Monk. And then Davis misses the three. Saar has the board. Then they met again in the South Region Final in 17. March of 17 in Memphis. Carolina won on the way to the title. And Davis has got to get better shots, get himself into the game for Carolina. Not playing confident with his strokes, so do some other things to help your club. And this continues the trend of slow starts for the Heels. Yes, really struggled early on. Sharp, big body through the ball. Sharp goes. sticks with it. Woo! Love his impact. Aggressive, likes to bounce it to footwork. Ends a Kentucky run. Metz gets another one started. And has a look to the Tar Heel bench after the main three from Davion Metz. Yeah, somebody must have said something. Roy's hollering at his team over there, too. Play tech, a guy that's got to light it up a little bit. Be active. Get himself available. Brooks packing in. Draws the double, taken away by Ware. Jenny Kentucky on the run. Askew pushes again. Fouls on the floor, but no question, Kentucky's uh, bringing the fight. They are hungry. They can look at that bench. They are spirited. They know it's been a struggle. They're very uncomfortable with that program. They have the one loss record that they have early in the year. And Mince is a guy. He's been confident with Bruiser Flint, longtime associate of John's, because head coach himself. Had a few spots for actually UMass. Second foul on Davis. So Davis for the heels and Jackson for the Wildcats. Both pretty. Two early Clark. personal fouls. Well, Terrence Clark. How about his size? You mentioned a look at a 6'7", a little floater. And the largest lead for Kentucky. First double-digit lead for either side. And another foul called on Kentucky. Now, this is going to be early foul trouble on both sides. Yeah, Walton on the floor now. A little bit of a rep as a shooter, but this is just gorgeous basketball. Get a step in that lane, and it signs for the release. Ware called for his first five team fouls already against Kentucky. So they handle that out of bounds beautifully. Great preparation by Kentucky. Yeah, that, one extra dribble cost him a shot. Oh, got bumped from behind by Clark, but hits it anyway. Caleb Love, rest from St. Louis. Big time recruit. One of those guys just has to develop. Does a nice job passing to the post. Askew hits the deck. Kentucky keeps it alive for Terrence Clark. Boarded by Sharp. There's their high-low setup. There it is, right away. The one big run to the goal. Sharp with the release. What a seal in the lane. How about the touch from Brooks? Very effective. Askew. Yeah, it looked like he yeah, yeah. got away sure with it. So now Brandon Boston Jr. Attacking, rejected at the rim. Uh, thus far, Kentucky's with a nice job balancing the floor. It's the secondary that's been the problem. Brooks has Boston on him. So, mouse in the house, here comes the help. Kick out, off the shot pick. Walton buries the triple. Oh. Kerwin Walton. They said he can shoot it. Seven straight for the heels. Walton's in the game because of Davis's foul trouble and impactful early. Kerwin Walton from Minnesota. And John's got to be happy with his team, but the ability to put it on the deck, get them organized. Big time by Walton. Woo! A little night on deep. Back in downtown Cleveland, Davion Mintz is showing up. Mintz, you should miss this one. Beautiful looking stroke. Gets those puppies organized. The push ahead, very confident in the open floor, knows he can make him much more relaxed, I think, than the earlier games, a little nylon on a consistent basis. And that's that look away at the bench. 
Now, he sat last year at Great with an ankle injury. He took over point at Great in his freshman year when the great Maurice Watson, great player, some of the major knee injury. But, I mean, even though he's a veteran, he's getting into his flow as sure. well. Okay? And, that's, and particularly in a new program, it's a little bit different. The comfort zone's not quite the same. Always be ready against Carolina on a dead ball or a timeout. Kessler on the floor, great looking prospect too. Runs the floor, got a really good looking shot. Or Cloder took a pump play on, no goaltend. It is out of bounds to the Heels. They said it went over the top of the backboard. Nice little dribble drive. And look at this contest of the bigs. Goodness. Some hands in the jar. Nice little give. Latek trying to feed it inside, knocked away. So, that's who brings Kentucky back. I like to see him get going too. Get his confidence. So, Askew playing the one, Mitz off the ball, Park off the ball, spotting up on the wing. Sharp has the board for Carolina. Sharp play by Askew, though. Low pushing it, Harris on, rather uh, Davis on the bench with two fouls. Oh, Ends high, what a move. How about, how about the footwork and the stride by the big fella? After the slow start for North Carolina, 9-0 run, they've made their last five shots. Uh, getting it inside is so important for them. Out of bounds. Just like on the baseline, the sideline says Eric Curry, out of bounds, turnover. And minced with a little bit of a push, a little woofing going on. That time with love. Uh, how about that? The ability, one, the post up and then the terrific stride. What a big guy. No fans. We know neither of these teams in the, in the top ten right now, but it feels, it has the juice oh, yeah. of Kentucky, Carolina. And these, these are two teams that are going to get better during the course of the year. And rocky starts, developing confidence. And usually, how about Roy? You know, three guys in a row are freshmen as the his point guards. I mean, and that, that is very difficult to come. You know, right, Anthony, and now Love. Off the Love miss. Kentucky runs again. It's Mintz. Eyes up. We saw a touch here. That shared it in the half court. Boston pulls up from the elbow. Well short. Follows his miss. And then Kessler called for the foul on Brandon Boston Jr. Following not, his miss. Not a bad little defensive set by Kessler. Showed big, recovered, just got the body involved down in the low box area. But they do come at you with numbers up front, Carolina. There is a bevy of big men available for the Heels. Has Boston doubled all the games this year? 20 and 10 against Richmond. Well, the maturity and growth of Brandon Boston Jr. is going to be a major factor for Kentucky if the Wildcats are going to turn it around. I, I don't know how he does it every year, John, though. It's very difficult just starting one freshman and incorporate him into your philosophy, taking away any unselfishness he might have, and being the star instead of blending. But every year, it's five good ones. A little full-court pressure now. And here's a reminder, the 84-85 team started 1-4, and four, ended up in the Sweet 16. Love running point for Carolina. Guarded by Askew. Sharp trying to really load up on that low box area. Isaiah Jackson still on the Kentucky bench with two personal fouls. He had the first bucket right now. Sharp steps out. Boarded by Mintz. A little bit of a settle. That was his first three-point attempt of the year. Mintz stops. Askew follows. And now Askew off the bounce in tight. And that's that jump stop John told both of us they were working on. Fundamentals going back to basics. Camp Cal. I don't think there was any lemonade distributed at Camp Cal mm. that week off. Do you think it was more grinding? I think more informative, to be honest with you. Yeah. I, I, I think the halftime at Notre Dame, uh, I, I think he, and I, I don't know this is fact, but uh, I'm sure it was more instructive uh, than really getting after them because you're trying to develop this whole attitude as a group of uh, doing it for one another, not individually. And I, I, I do think that's what he did because he said there was a lot of film, a lot of we, even though they did three a days. Oh, that's a violation. A violation. 
situation, that's an easy one to call. I think they should, if you get your foot back before they shoot. What do you think? Kind of like offsides, defense, you yeah, get back sure, one step without contact. Just a little dance step. I like it. And sometimes I like the, it. The, hey, you're, you, you sell the dance steps as well. <laughs> Normally later in the evening, though. We'll tiptoe around that one. The numbers now. Love with eyes up, attacking on Askew, what right to the rim. That kid can take you. Stick with that. Be basic. Kentucky's gone over four minutes without a field goal. Ooh, yes, I'm on Sarr. Is. Two. And Number two. It right? is. So that's two on Jackson, two on Sar. It's another Kentucky turnover. And now you look at Caleb Love, who took that one hard, and he's still down. Uh, just he didn't have to move at all. Well, normally Askew or other guards might start early, but Boy, that is really a rock-solid giveaway on Love. Hopefully he's okay. I think he's a little jarred going to the bench. He certainly is. So that means R.J. Davis is going to come back from Carolina with two personal Davis. fouls. And concern for Caleb Love going to the end of the Carolina bench. And then now foul trouble for the Cats. Jackson and Saar both with two. And those are the bigs, and you got to counter the... So, Plethora of size oh, by Carolina. You would say they have a. That's a graduate plethora? school word. I'll oh, good. Explain it a little bit later. Little rap, you go in El Wapo. <laughs> so Davis back in to run point. And just run point. That's exactly what he has to do. He's got a great handle. Pretty creative. Watch some highlights of him this morning. He and White. They are outstanding individually. He's now getting to incorporate it. Nine to shoot. Black trouble catching it. Seven. Black draws two. Creates. Books three. Really good defensive set by Kentucky. Boston pushes the Wildcats. Trying to take play tech. It's Clark. Another runner. Where follows it up. Let's wear presence felt from Camden, New Jersey. He brings energy, that kid, watching him. He had pretty good defense by him as well. Wow, Baycott couldn't finish sticking with it. Ware ends up with a foul. And that is his second, if indeed it is on Ware. We'll confirm in a moment. That's another big one on the Cats. Uh, this team's just a great offensive rebounding team over the years. Finished first on a consistent basis. They just attack the glass, relentless. And appropriately, they wear you down. But of course, at the other end, Ware providing a big time lift, an aggressive performer. So, Bill, you pointed out early, I mean, with all of the Carolina big men, they have the ability to hang fouls on you. Now, Jackson, Saar, and Ware all had two for Kentucky, and they got to know, not going anywhere. Well, what they do is they get down the floor quickly, so they post up. So they've, they've got you in a vulnerable spot already, and then once it goes up, they body you a little bit under the rim. Terrific offensive rebounding club. Clark sets him up. Like you see Clark in the ball with some dribble drives. Here's a little post rubs. You run those for Hero. You mentioned Monk earlier over the course of time. December 16th was that phenomenal defense the Monk. Five to shoot here. Mance Brooks switches off. So Mance, great shot fake. Ooh, Ooh, still there. Get, but there's where again. This kid works. He's a pleasure to watch. Brings a lot of High octane effort. Oh, and you always like the Garden State guys, I know. <laughs> Play time, Brooks, Alley, and Oop for the heels. It's Oops for the defense, but a little back screen set that up. And they get the ball side to side. Really stretch your defensive help. Jackson out there with two fouls for Kentucky. He's got to play intelligently about it. Here he is. Isaiah Jackson pulls up. And Jackson. Tap out of bounds. And we're chasing it again. He is aggressive. Three I mean, point game, and they are rocking on both ends. Uh, you mentioned Jersey. Why not? Jersey's finest. The ability at the rim, a little back screen. Send it in. Incredible. After another slow start for North Carolina, starting to find an offensive low, still only one made three for the Heels. 
The Cats have five assists and a three-point lead. Uh, Cal was talking to both of us about the ability to find one another, make the extra pass, be unselfish. Nice dive to the rim. And finished by Jackson, but getting the ball around the rim, get some open shooters. Extremely effective and getting them organized. Ask you that time. Perimeter by Mintz has really provided a solid lift. So if John Calipari is saying we want to see more energy and playing more together as a team, that's how we're going to get better. For the first 13 minutes, you would say mission accomplished. I think right? his message was heard, and the response has been excellent. And I love the energy of where we have a little shot of them for good reason. Really has played well. Foul trouble on both sides, but players with two both out there for the Cats and the Heels. Not able to get a shot. Black slow start, but he nails it. Uh, that's that's first elevation. That mid-range game for him, I think, is the secret. Playtech has to keep busy. Nice back, back cut. cut. Yeah, Clark. Offense. And it's going to be play on. It's a play on. So Playtech trying to draw the charge. And Patrick Evans did not buy. He didn't sell well enough, you think? Still move. I mean, that's... I'll tell you what, I thought it was pretty good play by Playtech, didn't you? Well, I, you know, I, I'm I'm among those who say, if you, you know, the flop, you, you know, play on, just see how it goes. Mm -hmm. But, hey. You sound like a suburban guy. I'm, I'm not wearing... I'm not wearing the stripes or the whistle. Okay, why is it Texas or a pine leaf, by the way? Uh, we haven't even gotten into Willie Nelson yet. Yeah, that's a travel by Clark. Give it back to the heels. And I think John just saying jump stop. He's going to take him out. He doesn't waste much time with the yank. And that is literally one of the things they have worked on over and over. Jump stop. Hey, John looked like Sparky Anderson. Give him the hook. Get oh. him out of here. <laughs> Sparky was not an analytics guy, was he? <laughs> no, I don't think he so. He came from the gut. North Carolina trying for... It's first lead, looking for a spot. And there's the seal low. Uh, offense oh. again, this one by Brooks. I don't know why big is to be six feet away from you, Phil Raftery, celebrating college basketball in the holiday season. I was hoping it was longer. Right. Than six. <laughs> <laughs> you, can, you can put that in your next rider, though. A nice little defense here. Second foul on Brooks, by the way. And now Boston. Off the miss, fight for it, won by Baycott. Now, one thing, Kentucky's getting good. Now, this is a tough shot on huh? right away without the running any offense. That'll get you a hook. What a rebound for Ware. I mean, he is doing battle with the Tar Heel big man. Hopping on the floor now. Very athletic. He runs in a family, by the way. Absolutely. Maybe he's a mix. So he's former Kentucky assistant, Kenny Payne. A little pin down. Think of Booker running this as well. You mentioned the others. Boston floater over Baycott, boarded by Sharp. Leaky Black. One big loads up, the other is at the top. And Ware does a nice job. Figured he won't make that, Sharp won't make that deep three. Love up top. Tend to shoot for the heels. Beat into the post. You got two on the glass now, too, if you get a good shot. Three to shoot. Love gives it up. Davis late in the clock, buries Ooh. it. And North Carolina has its first lead on Kentucky. Well, if he can do that at 34%, that a clip. Oh, what a welcome relief for Carolina, that is. Boston on the wing. Davis was out there to deny Askew. So now nine to shoot for Kentucky. Topping off the bounce. Jacob Toppin. So no hit reset. The rim. Yeah, three seconds, two seconds. Askew floats it and hits it. I like Late that though. buckets, both in. Uh, Askew doing a nice job using the dribble drive, not settling for a deep shot. Gained some confidence. Even again, Clark's coming back for Kentucky. Look at that talent, nice little triple drive here. All the way to the rim, a defensive breakdown for Kentucky. Refuse the ball screen, empty side, blow by. 
Askew trying to attack on Davis. That's offensive foul on Devin Askew. Offensive foul and another Wildcat turnover. Back and forth. John was looking for Vegas, who dribbled for a lot of weaving balls. This one, the ability to knock it down and convert. How about this ability on the empty side? Finish the deal, big time fashion. <laughs> Here's a look at the foul trouble. An interesting lineup right now for Carolina. All of those fouls will be impactful, including for Carolina. How about with John? And Brooks. John gave a little Carolina medicine there with the little trap in the corner on the inbounds. Stealing one from the Carolina playbook. It is heels by two. CBS tomorrow, if there was ever a year to come together and celebrate, this is it. Join Garth Brooks and Trisha Yearwood as they take requests and play their holiday favorites, Garth and Trisha, live tomorrow on CBS. Now Davis got to run the show now with the inexperience on the floor. Well, they got numbers here if they want. Mark on the run. Tough shot. Boy, oh, gives it up. The boss, the thing is he was hanging in the air. They're looking at the bench for a call right now. Empty side, one-on-one. -on -one. Boston off the bounce Ooh. and floater. Wow. wow. <laughs> they jumped on that left hand. He took advantage beautifully. Even again at 29. Brandon Boston Jr., seven early points. I just so love to get up to win the game. That's a good sign. Nice denial. Top of Where takes it away. And now Clark taking it on Davis. Forced a little bit against Baycott, right? Yeah, absolutely. He's so quick, isn't he? Nice little find off the dribble. He's just solid at that end, but it, with that whole left side to go, and then take advantage of that bounce. Beautiful. Ability against Baycott. Owned him on this particular play. These kids get a little more confidence, start playing together a little bit more. It's going to be a tough out. The Kentucky fouls on Lance Ware, and that is his third. So, the first to pick up three. Ware, who's just been terrific. I mean, the numbers are good, but the energy and presence even better. Absolutely. A little juice on the floor. And lead by example, too, for some of these younger guys. R.J. Davis still with the tape on the left thumb. That injury early in the year, but he's dealt with it. The freshman from White Plains, New York. New York Mr. Basketball. Yeah, nice little pull-up game, too. Great speed. I think he'd be a terrific on-ball defender as well. Askew sets it up. Jackson out there with two personals for the Cats. There's Sharp double. nearly gets the steal. And now on to the baseline. Top and misses. Mitz follows it on. One for the veteran, Davion Mitz. And he came from the foul line. He came a long way, 15, 17 feet. And just aggressive play. Of, uh, disarmed in the low post, but right into your camera from the foul line. That is just a good understanding of reading where the ball is coming off the rim. That foul's on Kerwin Walton, his first. And you could tell two Hall of Fame coaches, when you get in the bonus, you attack the rim. And you uh -huh. see that late in this first half from both sides. Now that's something that part of a learning process, too. You get away with things on the high school level. The speed of coverage is so much different. The reaction in a three-point line. Are you taking some notes just in case there's a Bill Rafferty coaching comeback? <laughs> yeah, don't worry about that. <laughs> Too many people saw our team's play. I wanted to start the rumor. Sharp keeps it alive. Kick out. Love no three. Jackson wins the fight for the board. And now Askew pulls up the reins. Double high, one rolls, one pops. Askew nearly walks. Topping off the bounce pass, Sharp all the way misses the hammer dunk, but gets it right back, and now Baycott rips it away. I mean, it is a fight underneath the rim. I don't know if Toppin had a jam that. Does he get a layup easily with the rim protecting him? Boston step back to the foul from Playtag, and one. There's the explosiveness you know you can get from Brandon Boston. Well, he's in his comfort zone, so to speak. The ability to make that mid-range jumper take that little bit of a lick. Step back where these kids do that very well. Just gorgeous preparation. And then the drill. And it's been pointed out a lot, but I mean, 
these are young men. And Brandon Bosner, who reclassified first commit as part of this class for Kentucky. I mean, well, the young men with a lot of rep. Yeah. And, I, and I think that's part of the difficulty because they have everybody telling them for years now that you are the guy. And as we have known, uh, consistently, particularly at Kentucky, the team game as they develop these young people. Pressure from the from the Cats. Pretty. And then Playcheck finishes it off as the Heels can press. When you press like that, your back guy has to be in position. That ends the Kentucky 7-0 run. And basically, the reason they back guy, though, there's not a five-man on the floor. That's Fletcher out there because the three fouls on where. Yeah. And now ask you, there's a foul on Playtech. Ask you trying to attack again. That is the second on Playtech. Coming up on at and the half, we'll send you to New York where the guys break down our first half and bring you highlights of the other big games in action coming up on at and at the half. What do you think of the uh, Very impressive. Saw him a couple of weeks ago, two games. Unbelievable. Much better defensively than people think. They got a lot of people who can ring the bell. But Playtech here, you've got an empty side. And he doesn't jump on the right hand of Askew, forcing him to the middle. And nobody really communicated for Caroline. That's part of the growth process. And then Askew continuing to attack to attack. He played big minutes in the first half. Spins that one in. Kentucky by five. And now they're set. Boss is the back guy in the press. Nice little trap. into the post. This is Baycock trying to reverse. Another tough fight for the rebound. And they'll get between them. I mean, Eric Curry having to touch gloves. Absolutely. A good aggressive effort. You've got to compete on the glass when you play Carolina. They are just thirsty for misses. Run them down. Nice little body up. Was it a deep shot? 17 to shoot. Inbound shot. Nice Sharp, spin what out. a spin, but then a nice recovery by the Cats defensively. Looked like Fletcher poked it I away. I think you're right. Pretty good hands. Boy, he's playing with some energy. Now Fletcher wants it on the offensive end against Sharp. I think John may have wanted a two-for-one, a giveaway here by Black. Reach-in foul on Leaky Black. First. Right, let's see if Kentucky gets hungry. Make the free throws, see if they can get a... An opportunity steal here, be in the right position. I don't think John would ever have this group together this far, this early. Do you? This, this, these five? Right. I mean, he's sort of saddled with foul difficulties. Sometimes you stumble into something, don't you? Yeah. Just keep playing hard. Boston has answered the challenge from his coach. 11 points, 5 rebounds, 2 assists in the first half for the freshman. Georgia, California High School Player of the Year last season, Sierra Canyon. Zaire Williams and Bronny James. It's an 11-2 run. Cal uses a timeout. Bill, with all of your basketball expertise, what's going to happen in the last 33 uh, seconds? Thank you. Self-praise is my <laughs> style, obviously. But I, I do think they're going to go for it here, Kentucky. Full-court pressure, see if they can disrupt, turn one over, get a little bit hungry. Now they back it off. 2-3 zone. On the wrinkle. Yeah. Offensive rebound is going to be a concern. We're always going to hold it till late. If you get a good shot, it's redeemable with a tip. Late in the half, zone out of the timeout. Got to turn the corner somehow. Will they give him a ball screen? they are just cracked in the zone. With seven to shoot, now five to shoot. Love looking for help. Love drives on Boston through the zone. And one off the window, Caleb Love. He cracked that little front. Nice read. The ability off the bounce. Faulty defense set it up, though. And you can turn that corner. A little kiss. In downtown Cleveland. Don't you love it? Fouls on Boston, and that is his second. So another big win for Kentucky. Sars coming back. He has two personals, so 4.4 left. You know. well, this is a, this big, a, the rebound is a big thing right here. If there happens to be a miss, you don't want to give the foul 
Got to squeeze. Lowe finishes it off. Cats have it last with 4.4. Got to shoot it. Alessar gets it, gives it up. Askew lets it go. Well, if the hungry cat hunts best, the Kentucky Wildcats come out hungry. 38-34 at the half. We'll send you to Adam Zucker in New York with AT&T of the half after these messages. First half stats brought to you by USAA with Kentucky by four on the North Carolina Tar Heels. Carter Blackburn with Bill Raftery, socially distant but closely tied together as always. And seriously, happy holidays and here's to a wonderful 2021 to all of you. Despite the distance, I do care for you. I, I, just I, want you to I, know, I appreciate it. I feel it from socially distant. All yeah, right, so if, after such a tough year, what a great time of you to celebrate with your families, right? Good to be back on the road again. It, absolutely. You, I knew you'd get Willie in here at some point. On the and road right to out. the final four. And all right, Roy, so Roy would like to get going for the yeah. holidays as well, get his club going. So what do you expect second half? I mean, uh, we've got foul trouble on both sides. We've seen a lot of excellent energy from the Wildcats, good response from the Heels. How does it play out in the second half? I'm, I'm curious to see what Carolina does. They love the speed game, get it down. But I think they've got to be patient and take advantage of their big guys, give them more opportunities to do some damage, particularly with the foul-laden interior of Kentucky. And how about Mintz's performance, huh? Pretty impressive. The veteran presence, and now it's Terrence Clark who begins the second half with the ball in his hands. And right out of the gate, a little change, a little run and jump, make a use of clock. A Hall of Fame coaching matchup. There's a bump. Jackson couldn't finish, but the foul is on Baycott. So Roy Williams, John Calipari, the Hall of Fame coaching matchup. Carolina and Kentucky. Now these two have seen it all, haven't they? And um, mentioned from the beginning, but I mean, you almost forget. I mean, Roy Williams really brought Carolina back to glory. John Calipari really brought Kentucky back to glory. It was there was a rough path for both of these programs prior to absolutely. How about Roy went over 400 wins in two programs? That's unheard of. This guy is a gamer, developing young people. When he's aspirating last year for him, really, with a great recruiting class, just blending them is the key for this program right now. I mean, Carolina fans want to forget the last place in the ACC, 6 14. When Roy took over, he was the third head coach in six years in yeah. North Carolina. Stabilizing now, including the 2017 title when they went through Kentucky. A little shove from the back, maybe Mintz, I think. It is on Mintz. That is his first. <laughs> Just a little small change here, losing balance. Saar in the right spot, too, to prevent. Oh, nice look. Falling asleep. Playtech gets fouled. So off the baseline inbound, Carolina steals a chance for a couple at the free throw line. Now, you mentioned Hall of Fame coaches. All the great ones score on those baseline out of bounds. Particularly young, against young teams. Communication skills lacking. Boston gets that foul for Kentucky, but they actually changed the foul at the half. So that is now the second on Boston. That was a that was a change at the half. So Boston fouls and fouls impactful early, even the first 30 seconds of the second half. We've had some big foul calls. And Boston taking over the point again. Now, that's one of those things. Nobody got a touch. You can get that shot a little later. The way they load up in that lane, go box to box. There's the back screen. Down to Brooks, back it in. Those two defenders. Nobody diving either when the ball goes inside. Leaky black, and then uh, bump. that's a big one. Isaiah Jackson gets his third. Terrible. Small change. So Jackson got two in the first three minutes of the first half, and now not even a minute into the second half, Jackson gets his third. So he'll have to sub out. Lance Ware, who was terrific in the first half, but he also has two personal Yeah, fouls. they are really in trouble. That's the impact of the bigs for Carolina. Ooh. Black and Clark nearly get yeah. taken up. Keep an eye on that one. Overload. Love. Air ball in the long two, sending the Cats on the run. Boston slows it up. 
Love to use that high post guy to start the offense. A little dribble exchange, pin down. This is what I like Sar now. They, they like to hit him on the elbow and go to win. Not a good look. Take it away. Brooks taps it. Baycott brings it back. And now Playtech attacks on Ware. Gets the block. Foul on Sar. And Baycott finishes it off. End to end. And that's the ability of the bigs to run the floor. Explosive. And Baycott gets those long legs in rhythm. There goes Playtech there with a little solid drive. Can hear John. The point was make the easy play, right? Exactly. Take the check down, and then Solar gets his third person foul. So already here in the second, a minute and a half in, Jackson and Solar have both picked up their third person. Thank you for interpreting, by the way. <laughs> so, when Cal, so when Cal says keep it simple, that means keep it simple, right? <laughs> You could have added the stupid part. Well, me, that's the uh, nice kiss, the kiss offense. Right. Now, Sarn had decent games with nine rebounds against Carolina last year. One game, 13 points. But he was a great force. Yeah, I thought he may really do a job today. Coaching change there. Danny Mann and Steve Ford decided to move over to Kentucky. Really extending the D. They've really not been able to get any back cuts against this terrific denial defense. Seven to shoot. Boston floats over Playtag. Tough shot. Boarded by Brooks. Ball's not popping around. Leaky Black looking to the post for Sharp. Sharp wants it. And now back in it. He draws two. Jackson gets the block. And then a foul committed by Sharp. Yeah, a little giveaway. Excellent defense by Jackson. That trip and the other end just defensively keeping your guy in position, moving those puppies, and now the good challenge late. Really rush the shot. Easy shots. So important. And they don't come off the dribble all the time. It comes off for action. Second personal foul. Aaron Sharp for North Carolina. Mintz conducting I mean, with the freshman on the wing and the grad transfer, Mintz. That's where you're starting your offense out here with 10 to go. So now Mintz calling oh, out the shot he walked. That when is Mintz it. passed it, you heard him say shot. Right. It's in take it, freshman. It's a great trip defensively, though, for Carolina. Don't you think? I mean, they were right out there in spot, moving the legs, and just a great challenge. Love the move defensively. Get him. So now eight turnovers, it's been a major, major issue for Kentucky. In fact, both of these teams, more turnovers than assists on the year. Well, they do a nice job positioning on the low post. Sharp, banging with Ware. Gets through, couldn't finish. Mintz, eyes up. Outlet to Boston. Cats on the run. Boston attacks and finishes off the look from Mintz. Well, a nice little sneak out, a great acknowledgement with the pass. Able to ward off, finish the deal. Nice little opportunity. You need easy baskets against Stingy D, and Carolina had been stepping it up on that end of the floor. Second foul on Love, Boston to the free throw line. And I mean, you can hear and see the mentorship really between Mintz and Boston. You call it just being good teammates, mm -hmm. but I mean, Mintz is literally trying to put him in position to play. Well, right now, John probably made the first time in his career he's doing point guard by committee. Mm -hmm. and just rotating different people up top. And play Clark some at the point. Mm -hmm. Cal pointed out it was a bit like Tyreek Evans, Memphis, in 2009. 6'6", mm -hmm. they were after a slow start. From the elbow. Boarded by Devin Askew. And now Askew brings it up for Kentucky. So the question of who's going to play point for Kentucky this year, right now it's just about everybody. Yeah, absolutely. As Q now, I think he's played within himself, particularly in that first half. So Boston off the ball, and now Jackson facing up. Jackson attacks, creates, foul is on the floor. Before Black, the okay. shot from Askew. Black, no. A little reach in. Let's double check. It is on Black, and that is his set. Black and Love both had two. 
See, when you work with a former coach, he's done a lot of refereeing, by the way. Usually done the course of his coaching career. Are you speaking of yourself? Yeah, well, well, most of us. Seven to shoot. Pull up. Austin clear out on the big Ooh. man. Wow, got it on the floor. So, Baycock. Austin knew. He forced into a tough shot. The little shove at the end cost him. You don't want to foul when the guy is going to put himself into a difficult release position. Now, second on Bacon, it will be shooting foul. So two shots coming from Brandon Boston Jr., who was attacking and getting to the line and hanging fouls on the heels now off the bounce. I don't know how John will reach this young guy, but he's a different player right now. On 60 Minutes tomorrow, what does the Pfizer vaccine mean for the pandemic? 60 Minutes, talk to the team's key players to find out tomorrow on CBS. With our producer, Bill Thayer, director Chris Benson, Carter Blackburn, Bill Raftery, CBS crew from downtown Cleveland with the Buckeyes and the Bruins to come. Pretty good afternoon to talent. Thank nice high-low, there you go, that early. And then Baycott off the look and sharp. Now, where it looks like he hurt his hand down on the low post there trying to defend. And that's on Boston, and that is now his third. But a pressure defensively for big people. You've got to run back and in position. A little double barrel there, a bruiser engine. <laughs> <laughs> Loading up on the young guy. That is a bruising. <laughs> Coaching double header right there. Love misses the wide open three. Ware goes up for it, and somehow Sharp rips it away, but can't finish. So now Boston attacking. Top and oh, great play. by Baycock. What a blow. Well, nobody's backing it out and running the offense. So give it to Sharp and one. Once again, the pressure of running the floor, being in a dominant position, but extraordinary. The big fellas, let him go, Roman, big time, huh? The heavy right. heels. You better come strong if you want to prevail against this inside game. The push, the ability to convert. Ooh. Bluegrass versus Baby Blue, Kentucky by two. Let's take a look at the fast analysis presented by AT&T 5G. A run on the floor, we talked about the offensive end, but right here, look at Baycott, the ability to get back and convert. At first, I thought Boston was one on three, but a nice fill here. Unfortunately, at the top of the summit, the big fella looming so large. And then the push at the other end, eventually a little tough angle delivery on the kiss shot. And how about the officiating note there? Let that go play on and no foul. Excellent. Really great job. Great coordination. No anticipation. Let it play. A little shot before we went to that highlight with Steve Robinson, a longtime assistant. And Gary Williams. Sharp misses the free throw. Askew brings it back. Clark off a good screen from where? And one of the committee running the point. Speaking of committee, Mitch Barnhart, Kentucky's athletic director, will serve as chair of the yeah. men's basketball selection committee this year. Dan Gavin and his staff remarkable work to prepare for March of 2021, whatever is ahead. And well, this might be the hardest year of all for the committee with all that's happened, but that was just not a good foul. Two seconds left on the shot clock, but ask you wisely in that position to deliver. So Boston, Jackson, Sawyer, and Sawyer's is really big because a minute and a half into the second half, he gets us there. Both he and Jackson got their third early in the second half. So the Carolina big men, uh, even with Sawyer on the floor, you know that he's playing with foul trouble. So they're extra aggressive. Well, he's got some offensive game, too. That's the problem. I mean, he can deliver some punch. Talk about him on the elbow driving the low post area. And that's the lift they need, particularly with the inexperience on the perimeter. The Irish know all about him. He was terrific. Yeah. Wildcat versus the Irish. He was terrific as a Demon Deacon mm -hmm. versus Notre Dame. And then Playtech gets his third for Carolina. Erwin Walton 
Gave him a lift late in the first half. And known as a shooter. Nice little entry here. Nice speed and then a nice finish from Armando Baycott. Well, you got to put up a fight down there. You got to do your homework, get in position, shove the big. So are back into the hands of Mintz, the two Kentucky veterans of college basketball. Now Brooks doesn't really have to guard him. So are not looking to dominate, but a nice little release on the dribble drive, huh? The floater from Clark. That's twice we've seen that. Brooks is really good getting position. Just discarded Sar. Keep going in there. And now Brooks will skip. Well, looking for Baycott. Well, you had him if he wanted. Bring it down to the side. Love resets, nine to shoot. Love off the screen from Brooks. Hesitation. And tied on Sar. Didn't get the bucket or the foul. Brooks following up, play on, and the Cats come away with it. Ask you, pass Black on the run. Oh, great balance. Clark nearly walking. John Calipari says, bring it out. Oh, John really working the sideline. He's all the way midcourt. Clark tries the runner again, boarded by Brooks. He is because of the inexperience. These big guys are going to get better holding their guy in position a little bit. Sharp and Baycott in particular. Askew doubles down. Nice denial where. Oh, Give it up, numbers. On the repost, Kentucky. Mets switches hands and finishes. Anyway, Cats by six. How smart. He had love in position to dominate. He took advantage with the, the curl. Davion Mentz with his season high scoring already. 13 points. Long nice. turns the corner and drops it off of Brooks. Shot fake on Ware, bump, and that is number four on, on Ware. Lance Ware. Yeah. Just wearing them out in the inside post defense. The consistency of this team to get it inside. Nice little denial. The ability to open the other in, just go body search. And to kiss that baby home. Mm. Veteran move in the open floor. Well, everybody talked about Saar being a great addition. Mintz, as the year progresses, is going to be magnificent, I think, for this team. And the, the Creighton Blue Jays fly. He's been doing that his whole college career. Well, they like to get up and down, no question about it. Get the ball side to side. A lot of individual skill ability. How about Marquette's win at Creighton? That was a big one. Unbelievable. And they came back and then seen all oh, crazy things happen right this year. And you every know, year, see like. Oh, Brooks off the free throw miss. Follows on the tap out. Got it. And now Long hits the three. And it's all because of the work done by Baycott to get the second effort. And not afraid to pass the ball around a little bit. A two-point game between the Tar Heels and the Wildcats. They have played some epic battles, including in the CBS Sports Classic in recent years. They have not been able to get Sar a touch. Brooks has done a great job in that low box area. So here goes Nicholas Mitz Dimer. Again. Wipe it out, and in fact it is. That is on Caleb Love, and that is his third. third yeah. Just the ability to swipe it out, not afraid to give that look, the extra pass. Get him organized. Make something happen. Season high, which means it's his... Kentucky hot. Mm -hmm. That's that Syracuse education. Uh, thank you. Thank you. You're, you've worked with a few Syracuse uh, folks over the years. So Kentucky, I mean, it was, when John Calipari told us everybody's panicking. I mean, that's what happens when you're one for Kentucky. I'm not. Well, Kentucky, I mean, uh, listen, that's... Uh, these pro these two programs, every time you play somebody, that's uh, the major game on your schedule. No question. And, and he was lamenting the fact they weren't home, which happens to every program. No buy games, no opportunities to te teach the young people, let them grow. But under the gun right now, pretty good response. Including the Detroit Mercy. A couple games get the Brad is now playing, Brad Calipari. Walton step back. And How about hits this? It. Well, he had that rip coming in. Why not? Back to back triples from Kerwin Walton, and we're even at 49. And what did Roy say to us? 
get the guards to make some shots to play solid. Carolina has four made threes, and three of them from Kerwin Walden, the freshman from Minnesota. And now Walden in the open floor. Sure. Saar commits the foul. Fourth on Saar. Huge for Walton. He is out of shot, but Walton really a little side saddle, able to convert the shot. Ooh, what a welcome relief. Roy, smile a little bit right now. Mr. Walton trying to say good night. Ooh, oh, very nice. And why not? It's Walton's place. Uh, just a little sidestep. The extra pass here after the slap out. Uh, just refreshing. And this helps everybody. Opens up the big people for opportunities now because you've got to stretch the D and hook him a little bit. So let him be on the entry side, the low box area. And he's come back fired up. He had a late turnover at Iowa that was uh, costly for the heels in that one. And as we talk about all of the talented freshmen on the floor, Kerwin Walton has added his name to the to list. The mix, right? Yeah. Spotlight on him. He's been terrific off the bench. Again, Carolina has only four made threes, three of them from Kerwin Walton. And with 11.43 to go in this one, lots of foul trouble on both sides, including Saar and Ware for the Wildcats. And that last trip by Saar, he made where he was going on that drive. Just a little bit of help to Skelter on the offensive end. A little run and jump now after the timeout. Again, got to be prepared for a lot of stuff when you play Carolina. On the 9-1 run, eight of those points from Walt. Tough shot there. That's an air ball right into the hands of Baycott. You got the defense right on your shooting hand. Black attacks on Askew. Leaky another, can't finish. Clark another, brings it back. Another tough shot. Two in a row by these clubs. You almost, you almost hear the stomp from Cal because I mean, you, you get numbers there on the run and a turnover. Here's the conclusion. Clark not really accustomed to being a point guard. He's looking to give it up to somebody where they want him running the show right now. So it's like a state of flux a little bit. You see the frustration by Venti by Cal. And you know, you pointed out they wanted to play through Saar offensively right. more, the seven-footer, but no opportunity because of all the foul trouble. And the good defense, too, particularly by this guy, Brooks. Got to stay on Walton. See if they get a post up on his side. Walton oh, yeah, knocked yeah, away yeah. by Jackson. So Walton trying to drive. Ends up turning it, turning it over. It touched the uh, Tar Heel last. Jackson disrupted it. So now it's Clark bringing it up at 6-7. One of the best players that Boston has produced in recent memory. Clark on the oh, offense. Yeah, it is offensive foul and then a tough tumble. And that's not what you're calling to play for. And he's injured, too. Yeah, Clark is down, and you can see him immediately around. holding the ankle. No, 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 no. Gets tangled up with Davis. It is an offensive foul and a turnover, second personal. But Clark clearly banged up. Uh, this is tough for him. He's not a point guard, but trying to learn that particular position. And the first little set. You dribble drive, and that's not what you do. You got to coordinate people. Guards get the good guards get the ball back at some point in the shot clock. So Clark on the bench for Kentucky. Devin Askew into the game for the Cats. And diagonal screen to the box, and they got a hold. Looks like this is on Mintz. That is his second. Team fouls are adding up on both sides as well. And they are legitimate fouls, I think. As you know, people, you know, a lot of whistles, but rightfully so. You pointed out several times, that's an excellent play on. A lot of contact, but no fouls. Yeah, absolutely. I love this kid's game, though. He and Sharp are going to be terrific players. They got had 11 double-doubles as a freshman, most since Anton Jameson. I mean, if you, anytime you're in a sentence, Mr. Jameson. Yeah. Bodes well. Jackson has the board off the miss from Baycock. He played with a lot of energy, that kid, too. Love watching his game. Look at this denial. If you don't back cut, you are going to have a tough time catching the ball. You're going to be forced deep on the floor and the shot clock. Nice Boston, little curl. Yeah. Off the catch. Good screen from Jackson, but couldn't take advantage. So Donovan Puff Johnson from Moon Township, PA, where 14 for the Eagles. John Calipari. 
And the uh, yeah, Pittsburgh area, right by the airport. He's got a nice little lefty stroke watching him. A little roller. Oh, hey, on cue. Moon Township representing. How about that? Puff. Now, then he went out to Hillcrest Prep and Phoenix played for Mike Bibby, but you got John Calipari from Moon Township trying to bring the Cats back, and here comes Puff. Puff, the magic. Able to convert. Big time southpaw delivery. Respect uh, from the well, Hall of Fame. I've carried him over the years on the golf course. <laughs> you know, right? He didn't have any games. Of course, uh, Billy Cunningham, OIC, great pal of mine. Uh, just so happy the job he's been able to do during his career here at uh, the alma mater. It is a young group, and here's a little yep. puff. Foul on Johnson's first. R.J. Davis is back into the game for North Carolina. First action since he got banged up. So Davis back on the floor for the heel. This is the largest lead of the game for North Carolina. As Terrence Clark tries to get prepared to get back into the game for Kentucky. Jacob Tobin, who's been one year at Rhode Island. A very good ram team in 21 games. 66% free throw shooter. Nice little stroke there. But yeah. Obi's Flyers beat him twice, though, in that matchup between the Toppins. Hmm. Need a uh, BC powder, perhaps, for Roy. Yeah. yeah. This game can be painful, no question about it. The Carolina way. Play hard, play smart, and play fast. Davis on the floor now, run the show. Got some shooters on the wing and wall and see if they can get him involved a little bit for his post entry too because you really got to guard him now. Baycott wants it on the block. Brooks wants it as well, but the Kentucky big men denying. Now Baycott is free for that high low. Three Under to four. Shoot. Now here's Davis. He launches it. Short into the hands of Toppin for the Cats. Not a pretty set. No field goals in over four minutes for Kentucky, and yet they're only down by three. Askew leaves it for Boston, keeps the handle together somehow. Mm -hmm. Plenty of time on the shot clock. And Jackson really hasn't been on the floor much with the fouls, but then he touches. Tough shot. Top two, Mitz goes to get it on the offensive glass. Looking for help, reset Kentucky. Well, we have seen him do that twice now. Really, really good nose for the ball. Pin down. Eight to shoot. Mets. How about a third chance for the Cats? Jackson goes to get it on the offensive glass. Boston will reset. Cal wants Askew at the point. Boston off the ball. Mm -hmm. A reminder, shot clock on the offensive glass. Reset to 20, so it's already down to six. Into the offense. Askew uh, and a foul called. Okay. Cal was frustrated. They were trying to set a play too high. One ball screens, one rolls, and frustration. Ooh, young people, persevere. Game summary brought to you by Jersey Mike's Subs with Jersey Bill Raftery. <laughs> Three-point lead for the Heels, and I mean, you could say both of these teams trying to find their way through with young backcourt. And when you look at Kentucky, they really have struggled. Different guys at the point, but right here, this is late in the shot clock where they really weren't set. Cal was trying to communicate where they have two people, one behind the other, one screens, rolls to the lane, and the other pops out, and he was really venting on the sideline, and it's just difficult. You know, Ian Eagle, your buddy and mine, sure. uh, we did the Nets for years. Jason Kidd was there. They would have a statue in the, at the front of the garden if he played in Madison Square. Oh. You know, for the next, think, pass first. Get everybody involved. Looks like it's a nice, clean look here. Hey, big props for uh, Noah Eagle. We call him the wild card. How about that? Yeah. yeah. Another broadcast Exciting. partner of yours. But to finish the thought on Kidd, it's get everybody organized. And like the good guard will get it back with 10 and get them into something or can do it on his own. Well, the philosophy now is Roy, we've seen that pose a couple of times because not doing the things he wants done. The good process. sign. Yeah, good sign for Kentucky with Terrence Clark back out on the floor. Rolled the ankle, so both Davis has been banged up for the heels and Clark has been banged up for the cats. Pulled out there. They might have even another foul, but 
Right before the break, Jackson got his fourth. So that means Jackson, Saar, and Ware all have four for Kentucky. Well, you notice the foul line defense there by Carolina, that long rebound. A lot of teams would have been lackadaisical covering the shooter and lost it. And then Terrence Clark gets his third. Leaky Black to the line. Got the first. Double bonus, two shots here. Leaky Black, Concord, North Carolina. Malik. You know, some coaches like to be old, which I certainly can relate to. Uh, right now, the guards, particularly Carolina, are young, and all of the starters for Kentucky are, and it really is difficult. You're sort of pounding them to do things that they're unaccustomed to do. It's a very difficult task. Second chance for the Heels. This has been a string. Offensive rebounding, and then Black right to the rim, and no, looks yeah. like, yeah, let's see, it is number five on where. I thought he kept his arms pretty good. The verticality gave ground. <laughs> Ware fouls out, 734. Means, Ooh. yeah. That's tough. One of the few. Looks like Barry asking the same thing. He's saying he went straight up, and I love this kid's energy. And enjoys playing, gets out after it. Yeah, you know, we said even before he fouled out of this game, I mean, the numbers don't tell you what Lance Ware brought mm -hmm. to the floor for Kentucky today. I mean, four points, but still, he was terrific and now fouls out. That means you got to come back with Jackson or Saar, who both have four apiece. Well, he played with emotion, a care, a concern, wanting to contribute, energizing his teammates. And give credit to Carolina, too, because a lot of those fouls were hung on the Cats early, mm -hmm. so the heels were aggressive. Trying to get Kentucky exactly into this position. Out of no. trouble with the big men. No, they do force you with the situation, particularly inside, and then having to check out. Such a great offensive rebounding team. Offensive rebound was the 10th for Carolina. And Leaky Black rattles it home. Five-point edge for the Heels. And this kid is really a good driver. Pushes it. And very dangerous in the early offense as well. Missed a second, but here's another chance. This counts as Brooks. a third chance on the trip for the Heels. I think Brooks got that hand on it. And now Davis sets him up. Nine to shoot. Davis around the screen for Brooks. He screens again, freeing Leaky Black. Tap out, finally Kentucky clears it. Mintz gets the rebound, and Mintz coast oh! to coast. Can't stick the finish. Unabashed, huh? He is playing in a fearless fashion. He wasn't the least bit concerned with all the blue shirts in front of him, though. Nice little Euro. And almost an opportunity for a three-point play. And that is now three fouls on Garrison Brooks. But at this point, a big man with three fouls in the game of 7 0 That's not even a concern. That major concern for the Cats. Ware is already fouled out. Jackson, Sawyer have four, and then on the backboard, Boston and Clark both have three. Mm. Both teams in the double bonus for 7 8 So, free throws and attacking. Hey, get it inside and pound it. Maybe on Mitz. Thought that was a uh, lane violation. Doesn't get the call, but Mitz wanted another one. That could be big. Sharp handles it, beats Brooks. Big to big. A little double. Somebody's got to be free. A little fumble. Oh, yeah. The first down. time they've doubled. And we saw who came over, and then Brooks touched it out of bounds. So good defensive stretch here for Kentucky. The turnovers have been whittled in this game. Not perfect, but... Carolina better with always an offensive pick. Oh, my God. That one, Jackson again. A little pin down. That's and it. That's, that's five on Jackson. Yeah. It is Isaiah Jackson and Lance Ware have both fouled out for Kentucky. And Olivier Saar has four. And John asking, are they moving at the other end? He's a little bit upset on the whistle. And right here we'll just see if he... Uh, slightly, but you've got to be like a statue. Well, in fairness, that is one of the things that's been yeah. pointed out as a 
officiating point of emphasis this year is moving on the screen to get too wide. Exactly. Right? Well, that one was not a yeah. wide. Yeah, exactly. But that was just motion at the end. Why, you say? Kentucky yeah. down by four with two players already fouled out. And they run that little curl, the cross screen, the two bigs. Playtech gives it up, seven to shoot. Long steps into it. They're going the and other way. Foul Sharp against Carolina. It's Sharp who gets it. That is his third. 621. Tuesday, 9 Eastern CBS Sports Network, 18th ranked San Diego State against St. Mary's on the 24 hour home of CBS Sports. Terrific battle between San Diego State and BYU. BYU won it. Won it. The How Aztecs about that one? came yeah. all the way back. San Diego State had the Opening win over UCLA. We'll see the Bruins next here in mm -hmm. Cleveland against the Buckeyes. Yeah, I think a much improved UCLA team, particularly on that defensive end. They can get after you. And efficient offensively. Good shooters. And Sarr's got to play intelligently on that defensive end now with his foul problems. Jackson's fouled out. Ware is fouled out. Yeah, the Cats can play through Sarr in the last 621, which was part of the game plan coming in. Extend to the floor now. Clark's still hobbling a little bit. No field goals in seven minutes and counting for Kentucky. Big to big here. Sharp backing in. Kick out. Play tag, big three. What a great shot for another reason. They really loaded up on the offensive class. Great offensive position if it didn't go down. The slow shooting start for Carolina. The early hole. They have dug out. Lead the Cats by five. A little double stagger here. Boston off the look from Mintz. That was a big one. Yeah, sure was. They don't get back. The drought yeah. continues, but then the heels. Was it touched? I tell you, I yeah. thought it might have been a double tick on that. Mm -hmm. It is out of bounds off of Boston. That's the call. And Tar Heel basketball. Here comes Clark. Askew checks out. So the backcourt with Mintz, Clark, and Boston all the floor together for Kentucky. And they don't lose play tech, but he really keeps busy. Clark can't go sniffing to help others. That slice cut. Look at this lock on the back screen. Pretty execution. Timely. Brooks finishes it off. Carolina by seven. Largest lead for the Heels. Most rub Sar really has to dig in on his guy. Want that basketball in the low box. Clark attacks. Skip Boston. Give it up. Mintz. Nice. Off the bounce. Mintz couldn't hit. Second chance. Clark fires the three. Kentucky needs something to go down. Val is on the floor. That will get Saar to the free throw line. Much more activity by yeah. Saar, though, right? All of a sudden, look at this little back screen. Said, just no communication. You almost have to switch that one. Nice little lob. Perfect execution. Jam it and let your partner know. Carolina fashion. Fouls on Brooks. That is his fourth. So that's a big one for the heels. And now Saar. Ducky trying to score at the free throw line because it has been eight minutes without a field goal for the Cats. And that is a quiet day for Olivier Saar with only two points. Hasn't hit a field goal. But again, credit North Carolina, both strategy and defense, and then sorry, can't end the drought. This is a tough team for Kentucky to come back. They could be inside play. And they can get you in foul problems, which we've seen. Beat you on the glass. Cover both boxes. Playtech coming up by Boston. Feeds it in, gets it back in the corner. Out of bounds, off of Toppin. He did a nice job. He read, that was a baseline pass that was well executed on the screen. Saved the goal. A hey, tough spot to inbound, right? Yeah, but this corner, the run to a bit, well, not ready, really. Open. So Love gets it back, seven to shoot. Love attacks on Askew, takes the bump, play on. Short can't hit it, foul is on 
Kentucky somewhere in there. Not sure who they got it on. It might be Clark. I don't think it was Shaw, but you can just see the impact of their body, the movement, get you shoved under the rim. And just right here, look at this inside position. That is just gorgeous. Great preparation. It's on Saar, and that's, yeah, that's it. So Jackson, Ware, and Saar have all fouled out for Kentucky. So the Wildcats will have to presumably go small. I mean, you don't have many other options for the last 4 three, 33 yeah. to go small and try and come back. Your point guard might be guarding their center or power forward. I mean, that, that's the position they're in right now. Well, when one of your point guards, anyway, is Terrence Clark at 6'7", but... I mean, you, you pointed out from the very get-go, I mean, the Heels have a lot of big bodies, and they can get just about anybody in foul trouble. And they play the same way. Very consistent in their screening, understanding of the body, they control the opponent. You can hear John saying, you've got the shooter, and these fundamental things that you would expect. Kentucky needing offense from somewhere in the last four and a half. A 20 to six run. Boston hasn't scored since the 17 minute mark of the second half. And they're stuck on one side right here. Defense loading up. Boston tries to drop it off for Toppin. Good hustle play by Fletcher to keep it alive. Down to five. Florida shoot. Askew crossing over, drops it off Toppin. Finally, something goes down for Kentucky. Uh, during the drive, a great presentation. Askew. Can the Cats fight back in the last 352? Oh. The Heels bring in the fight anyway with Baycott. What this distribution by Sharp. Clark on the wing, attacking Black. Clark floats it and hits it, Terrence Clark. Can't match baskets, Zink stops. And now can Kentucky get back on D to slow the heels transition? Black attacking Clark, step back. Look at this rebound, and a foul. And a foul. Oh! Too much on the offensive glass from De'Ron Sharp and North Carolina. CBS, what do you think? Uh, Look, about the Gators, your expertise, can uh, Florida win? It would be a shootout if the Gators uh, are able to knock off the tie, and it would be a thriller if it's Gators and Tide scoring up and down. It would help in terms of the high speed. Mm -hmm. The high speed right. team could be on the yep. line. Back Jones, right. potentially right. Devontae Smith could be just the fourth wide receiver to win the Heisman, so an SEC title. And potentially the Heisman Trophy on the line tonight. Alabama versus Florida. They take on the run. Bump play on. Black does. Fight for the loose ball again. Won by Carolina. That ball movement. Pretty impressive with this team. Side to side. A lot of touches. Extra look. Black in the corner. Boarded by Clark. Cats in a hurry. Ask you loader. That's a heck of a goal. Open floor with Biggs prevailing. Still anyone's game. Two and a half to go. Six points separates the Tar Heels and the Wildcats. Toppin really can't handle the low post box area. Sharp was begging big time. So love resets. Got to go inside. Physically, there's that little slice that we saw earlier. Murphy's play, screen down, screen to screener. Four to shoot, play tech. Oh, Look at this inside, though. Another oh, offensive oh, rebound and second chance bucket for the Tar Heels. Yeah, you just see the size disparity, the ability to dominate. Uh, not really too many answers, but if you can shoot it soft enough, these kind of things happen uh, for Carolina. Just cover the weak side. Just a great understanding of offensive rebounding. Fouls on Mintz, his third. And hurt his hand, or he's got some blood, maybe? See, I'm not sure, but Mintz is coming out for a moment. We'll keep an eye on that. He's down in some Gatorade real quick, so perhaps gripping issues. We'll see if Mintz can come back. I mean, the Cats need him. Badly. Oh, he's got a little bit of a cramp. That's why he's got the water going. 
That's one of the reasons I use liquids. <laughs> Where do the cramps usually appear? Well, maybe we'll leave it at that. Huh? So it is the largest lead for North Carolina by nine. Clark off the screen from top of the tax, rejected by the rim, and then Clark comes down awkward again. Clearly doesn't have the springs, and that ankle that he rolled earlier bothering mm -hmm. him again. And then wise enough to hold it out here, use clock, get the defense moving. Hey, the Carolina way, you have the lead late, just so stretch it out into four corners, right? A little dribble drive here, only one postman. Gotta go. Love gets it back. Three to shoot. There oh, nice spin. Boston <laughs> rejection. So the Cats get a defensive stop. That is shot clock violation, although Kentucky was ready to run. Yeah, they were ready to go. Shot clock violation means you gotta get it inbounds, and Carolina can set it up defensively. Now both these teams were thirsty for a victory. Kentucky a long way to go to get where they want to go. Now Boston lost Boston. it out of bounds. I mean, Carolina has youth itself, but you just feel those little things of more veteran play and such small things have shown up big. Up front. I mean, they're just so powerful. I mean, just devastating the physicality they can provide. A little post offense, obviously. Kentucky tried to turn up the full court pressure. Clark reaches in and fouls, and that is five on Clark. He fouls out with a minute nine. Meaning Clark, Jackson, Ware, and Saar have all fouled out for the Cats. And the other bad news is they go home, they have to go over to Louisville, I believe. That's right. If I'm not mistaken. At one and five, so it's at Louisville, and then the start of SEC play with South Carolina. And a hope for Kentucky that Keon Brooks can come back at some point in the near future and give them a lift. And this is a challenge for these young guys at Kentucky. To, to bond as a group understand their psyche has been impacted at this point because everything has been so good and carefree during their careers everybody attracted to get them to go to their university and now all of a sudden goodness it's shattered a little bit so it's just got to be a group thing organize your thoughts don't get down on yourself work hard and practice it always starts on the defensive end nope. that's where you really get your game going Create some havoc, get some easy baskets. And they struggle to get easy hoops. Latex fouls, so let's stop the clock and sends Askew to the line. Good result there for Kentucky. Cats led this one by 11 at the 13.06 mark of the first half. So, I mean, it was a good start. There was the energy, there was the Very team much flow. So. And yet, still, especially with all the foul outs, a minute one, you're down by 11. Largest lead for Carolina. And despite the good start, Kentucky is now staring at one and five. Well, that's guarding without fouling is a major issue, too. It, it's something they've got to straighten out. They've got to make this, get your defense set. Green, Havoc. And for North Carolina, the way they've gotten to five and two has been overcoming slow starts. Another one today, down yeah. by double digits in the first half. And now a double digit lead with less than a minute to go. Outside shooting and free throw. Oh, offensive long. Good Tony. sell by Mintz. You got to be careful with the referee, too. And that's a fourth on love. So Mintz making a play for his team to get it back and give Kentucky at least a glimmer. Got to go quick if you're Kentucky. They're trying to force him to use clock. Ask you down the baseline, stepped on the baseline and turned it over. Playtech with great defense, though. And the questions at point guard continue for Kentucky. Yeah, no easy answer. Again, it's going to be by committee. Brooks looking for the lob to play tag. Instead, he gets it back. Brooks is a good passer. Finds people. Keep away from Carolina. Playtech brings it out. And now Brooks slipping. And time slipping away for Kentucky. A lot of guys would have passed that diagonally. Brooks did not. They were jumping the passing lane. Hey, speaking of jumping, yeah. <laughs> jumping for joy. On cue. In baby blue.
great Woody Durham. The late great Woody Durham. Oh, the, uh, yeah. Love this Carolina. Wonderful family, the Durham family. Yeah. Holiday wishes. Durham's as well. So Clark, Jackson, Ware, and Saar all fouling out for Kentucky, dimming the hopes for a comeback in the last couple of minutes. And that foul's really destroyed any opportunities in a way. Mintz off the shot, fake into the corner. Triple, won't go, Mintz. Again, third. Glass. That's <laughs> third. Unbelievable, oh, he hurt his leg again, or he got the cramp going. So Mintz still fighting for Kentucky, but it's Carolina by 10. After the solid start for Kentucky, now with 16.5 to go, it is the Tar Heels with a 10-point edge. North Carolina ball and a chance to close it out and go to 5-2 and two for UNC. I'm impressed with Brooks. I mean, just solid on both ends of the floor. I mentioned his passing. He's the inbounder. Yeah, it does, does that say something? After I said that. <laughs> But it works out. It was out the right the pass. It was yeah. the right pass. Sure, but I mean that that does say something. That he's the inbounder, right? Yeah. You put the ball into the hands of your senior, the preseason ACC Player of the Year, in a stretch like this. He always has two hands on it too, whether it's a rebound or catch, pass. And Kerwin Walton was terrific off the bench for the heels, especially from outside. I mean. Like, uh, like like Roy told us, it comes down to making shots, right? and, and that's exactly what Kerman Walton did. He Big gave some separation at a key time, a couple of threes. I believe the comeback effort. So we talked at the beginning about how both of these teams have issues. Yes, Kentucky, of course, with only one win, more pronounced. But what do you think the heels learned today out of this one? Well, it, again, we mentioned making shots. Uh, <laughs> It touches in the box area on a consistent basis. You're going to get step-in looks, and your shooting will improve. A little more dribble drive and be creative and find the guy stepping into his shot. Oh, a nice little back cut. Well, I like Mintz's game. Boston misses the triple. Best throw with the rebound. That should be it. Kentucky is 1-5 for the first time since before. Adolph Rupp's tenure with the Wildcats. It is North Carolina, 75-63 over Kentucky. We will be back to Cleveland for the Bill Raftery postgame show next. <laughs>